man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. Our Alpha and Omega, 
our present and future. The creator of heaven and earth. Our best friend. As we seek your face, may we know you feel your presence and say.
draws me close to Him. And the world around me, it fades away. Jesus draws me closer. Close Lord to me For I desire to worship and Come on, let's sing Jesus draws me
is powerful. Can I have a witness? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Your name is powerful. Yeah. Come on, let's all sing it. Oh, Jesus. in this world you are glorious and faithful in all your ways your name is powerful and manifest in this world you are glorious and faithful in all your ways your name and any force in this world You are glorious And faithful in all your ways Your name is powerful And any force in this world Tell him you are glorious
you tell him yourself. Tell him I'm deep in love. I'm deep in love with you. I'm a father. I'm deep in love.
Gazum Badegasu, Ketalo Cote Badegazo, Roche Bradegazo Coteleca, Ea Robizando Cotelecato, Esso Bradegasso Catala, Sierre Gotia Badegosa, Recatolando Bredegato, Kendalaba, Hosea Cate, Casumbra de Catola Badega, Eria Gosi Badango, Telehaya, Ea Moshe Bade. God, we love you. We celebrate you. Eri kasombra de gazo, ke shele kete, ke kiro bradegado. Connect to something this evening that money cannot buy. Connect to something this evening that no man can give you. Eh, aroba sombra de gazo katalama. Eh, the Bible says exceedingly abundantly above that which you dare to ask or think according to the working power that worketh in you. Now express yourself according to the Spirit of God and work in you. He says he can do exceedingly abundantly beyond that which you dare to ask or think. May God give you a language to ask for beyond what you can ask for. To pray for beyond what you can pray for. To think beyond what you can think. If you're sick in your body, you take your healing this evening in the mighty name of Jesus. Came with a clutch or a cousin or whatever. God is healing you this evening, this very hour, in the name of Jesus Christ. May God heal arthritis today. May that back issue heal. May those kidneys start working. In the mighty name of Jesus, Kento Lebrade Gazo, Rekaso Talabade, Ikorando Kobalade, ingestion is judged, digestive issues are judged. Reko Sempra Rago Segetele, Reko Balegado. There's a lady here, you had an ectopic pregnancy, you've been having trouble moving. God is healing you this evening, this very second. Now you go home with your healing. Mantole Barade Gazo, Brade Gatolo. Somebody speak over your children. Say, Father, my children are for signs. They are for wonders. They are potent. Told of God, whose speech is many, speaking to their destinies. Say, I will not lose any to the perversions of this world, to the deceptions of our time. Pray for your marriage. Your career, your dreams. Your aspirations, mentolo parade, sobra de gaso, ketala mando zibada, kori katola bale, soba katala, ma sombre de gete, koli katoba. The Lord is the lifter of my head, is the portion of my cup, e kalando, is my shield and my glory. The lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. 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 Oh, Rekola Mando. I am a success by the power of the Holy Spirit. I fulfill the purpose of God on my life on the earth to the glory of His name. Maso Pradegado. Lekete Koziba. Rekatola Mando Kie. Korando Zielego. Masale, the Bible says the communication of your faith becomes effectual as you acknowledge every good thing which is in you, which is in Christ. Speak those things which are in you, which are of Christ. I know that by his stripes you are healed. That is in you and it is of Christ. Claim your health in the mighty name of Jesus. He bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. Mentolo baralego, kashoralaba. Yet we did consider him stricken, smitten and afflicted of God. Rekatole 
Eliagota Parera, Koshi Marelegato, Mesari Bato, Kea Rorigato, Erika Logato, Mekatalama, Regadola, Lingo Tapa, Mesokopa, Shekere, the Kozibala. The Bible says the Lord is my rock, He's my fortress, He's my deliverer, my strength in whom I will trust. <laughs> In whom I will trust. Oh, I will lift up my eyes upon the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. It cometh from the Lord. It cometh from the Lord. The Lord that watches over you. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. He's your shield and he's your buckler. The Bible says he's held in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee? Whose mind is stayed on thee? For he that trust in thee. Hey, ah, I trust in you, Lord. My mind is set on you. Only your word. Oh, it's a light unto my path. It's a lamp unto my feet. It's working in my body. It's working in my ministry. It's working in my marriage. It's working in my family. In the name of Jesus, it's working in my country. It's working in my dreams. It's working in my aspiration. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm moved by the word of God. Salvation is of the Lord and strength is of Him. For a thousand generations, now to Him, the only wise and true God who acts all things for our good. Hey, because we love him and we are called according to his purposes. Greater days are ahead of us. Greater years are ahead of you. The worst has already happened. The best is yet to come. Your Redeemer leaves. Your Redeemer leaves. God is not dead. He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. And He lives in the inside of you. He lives in the inside of you. He lives in the inside of you. Oh, He lives in the inside of you. He lives in the inside of you. He's in your bones. He's in your blood. He's in your organs. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, the old is past, and now the new. And all things are of God which has reconciled us to himself and he has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation we are reconciled he that is joined with the lord is one spirit with the lord we are one with the lord we are one with the lord jesus said they in me and i in you that we will be one and that the world will believe that you have loved them oh this is love made perfect this is love made perfect that you might have confidence on that day of crisis for as he is so are you in this world jesus we glorify your name we celebrate you can you give him a mighty hand of praise come on clap for jesus clap for jesus clap for jesus hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He has answered our prayers. You may take your seats. You may take your seats. Choir, thank you very much. I feel the presence of God. People in the back, kindly take your seats quickly. At the exception of the ushers and the security team, we will ask you kindly. It's the Lord of the house, and it's for your security that you all take your seats. There is more that we got at the back. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I got good news this week. Can I share? Do you have a video? Is a video up there? I want you to see the video and I'll explain the good news. Whatever we can do for the glory of God, we shall do. July 2023, 
We made history. They tell our story. They will say we are those that reminded the world of the faithfulness of Jesus. One clap at a time. They will say we gave to heaven the longest applause known to mankind. Records are made and records are broken, but the sound of our clapping will echo through the corridors of eternity forever. One day when a man gets to a page and looks for the longest applause ever given in history, they will find that it was for Jesus Christ. <laughs> and it was done by Panero Ministries International. Glory to God. Fenero, make manifest. <laughs> All for Jesus! <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. So let me explain this. For those of you, you might get your seats. For those of you, you might take your seats. Please take your seats. <laughs> take your seats. Now listen, listen. So for those of you who don't know what really, what the story is about, when we were celebrating our ninth year anniversary, we told, we wanted to do something. We wanted to produce a sound that maybe earth has never produced since Adam. So we thought, what can we do? We committed, we committed to give the the devil is a liar listen listen we committed to give the longest clap ever in human history for Jesus praise the Lord so that one day if somebody goes looking through YouTube Facebook including Guinness book of records where, whichever platform they should find that one day a crazy people 2023 July 30th sat in a room and clapped for the Lord of Lords Jesus Christ for 3 hours 16 minutes and 1 second we broke the previous one which was 2 hours 5 minutes I think so they sent us an email and it reads the longest applause. Listen, achieved by Grace Lubega Matovu and the clap for Jesus team. <laughs> Woo! Official, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we are going to do more for Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for doing this for our Lord. Praise the Lord. Heaven, heaven will say, you guys. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm so elated that our Irish team is in the house. Stand up. Stand up, yo. Yeah. So... That the fellowship in Fintona is led by that wonderful man called Pastor Simon Matovu with his wife, Zoe. I see Boyd, Shannon, right? Shannon Boyd is here. Uh-huh. Megan is here. And then the wonderful couple, the Cocklands. Whenever I visit them in the Northern Ireland, they get me and my wife a wee cup of tea and a biscuit. No, and a wee biscuit. Good to have you. You may take your seats. We love you so much. I have a wonderful team all the way from South Africa. Come on, stand up and wave to the Fanero House. Led by one gentleman called Mr. Graham Yoko. 
we have engaged them over something very important that I'm going to announce officially very soon. Touch and education. You're welcome. We love you. We honor you. We celebrate you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Allow me to bless our offerings and then I'm, I want to go straight into the word. Heavenly Father, this evening we worship you with our giving and I believe that you'll supply all our needs according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And all saints said, Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word? Ready for the word? Okay, back with your seatbelts. My mandate this evening, very quickly, is coming from the Gospel of St. John, the 21st chapter. The 25th verse. 21st chapter. The 25th verse. And, and let me, allow me to begin this way. Because you need to understand John as a writer. As I already say, the Gospels are important because they give us the facets of the person of Christ as every man writes from where they beheld Christ and I think a very important aspect and why he has created the essence of fellowship because he says one will come with a revelation one will come with a hymn one will come with a song and this is what elevates and builds the church of Jesus Christ because what you have and probably see by Christ I have not yet seen and what she sees and has understood by Jesus and I have not seen yet when we bring these conversations together, the picture of Christ is defined very clearly. Even Paul in his writing, he says, I have spoken these things so that you might know my knowledge in the mystery. He's not saying that I've spoken these things or written, read these things that you might know the knowledge. You might come to the full knowledge of the mystery. No, he is humble to recognize that he has his own knowledge in the mystery. And by revelation, when he makes known and to whoever he's writing to, that by hope, when they read, they should come or will come to his knowledge in the mystery. In other words, he respects that another man one day will come to the very mystery and demystify it another way, break it down another way, understand it another way. And Paul gave us something. Peter gave us something. John gave us something. They all brought something on the table. And that's how the gospel is preached. Okay? No man is an island. Everybody has something. They give or receive from another. We're all as a result of old wombs and wonderful midwives. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, John is a unique writer. He sees things from a very wonderful perspective. In fact, I always tell people that I think John in scripture has one of the oldest accounts <laughs> in history as we know it. Because for him, it didn't begin from the beginning when the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the, 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 the deep. No, he begins from the beginning where the Word was. Where the Word was with God and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And nothing, he says, all things he says were all made by him and without him, nothing was made that is made. Now that's your Genesis chapter 1. It's in chapter 3. It's in verse 3 of, of, of this man called John. John you study, for example, the miracles, that is about seven miracles, okay? And of course, the number seven means complete or perfection. And if you study each miracle as John writes it, you'll be amazed that there's something so deep in there in understanding the dimensions of the miraculous. You can study that at that level. I could teach that at that level. So he's a unique writer. But he says something that I, I believe is so hard to explain or something even I have not had many teach or anybody teach, but it's something that has astounded me and captured me for so many years and allow me to indulge you, to mature you a bit. If, if you came for a job or a wife, this might not be your sermon. Next week, next week is your sermon. But the fact that you came, maybe it's your sermon. You don't know yet. Praise the Lord. This is one of those toughest things to, 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 to unpack, but I pray by God, he'll give me the grace and language to be able to articulate as I ought. Listen, he says, there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one of them, he says, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. <laughs> what a thought. 
Where does a man begin from? To break this. Maybe let me begin by going slowly with some of us because I might lose a few of you. These men walked with Jesus Christ. They saw the miracles that were done. They saw the things that he did daily. They were observing him. And as they kept observing this Lord Jesus, everyone from wherever they saw the Lord or from whichever angle they saw the Lord, the scriptures tell us from the point or vantage point where John saw the Lord, he said there were many things that Jesus did. Up till today, people are still trying to understand 66 books. And now we hear a report that the Christian denomination, no, the Christian faith is now split by more than a thousand denominations. It's all Christian, whether it's Orthodox, Coptic, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Baptist, you know, Roman, more than a thousand. In there also are small little breaks and small little divisions. They tell you right now we're divided by more than a thousand denominations all on doctrine and opinions of Christ. Some right, some wrong. So help us God. But listen. John sees Christ doing things and he, by the Spirit, he's led to write whatever is, he feels led or is inspired by God for his assignment as a man. And I'm going to come back to assignment later. Allow me. But in the things John saw, he says, if everything this man did was to be written, then the books, sorry, the world itself could not contain the books that should have been written. In other words, with the things Jesus did, there was a lot he taught in what he did. That it, in whatever he taught, if everything was to be written, the Bible says the world will not contain the books that should be written. What do you see when you listen to that kind of scripture? This is what I see. I see the multi-dimension of every letter, every word, every sentence, every work, every precept, precept every concept, Every idea, every lesson. Jesus tells you that in everything that I did on the earth, there was multi-dimensions through, through which I would demystify my person to you. Now, John, to say this, I must imagine the things John saw when he was watching the Christ. That's why the essence of Proverbs, for example, he says is to give subtlety to the man which is simple. Because down there, he tells them it is not right that you should love simplicity. Man was not made to just understand simplicity or to work in simplicity concerning the things of God. God has called you to be deep when it comes to him. Of course, the person of Christ is simple. Okay? But he is not in simplicity. There is that simplicity, which Paul speaks about. He says, for I fear least by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve through the subtility, his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity which is in Jesus Christ. Okay? There's a simplicity in Christ. But that doesn't mean that Christ is simple. There's a simplicity in him. But that doesn't mean that he is simple. Or that you should love simplicity as men define simplicity. Because the simpler you are, the easier you are to incline to carnality. Are you following what I'm saying? God has called all of us to a certain depth. I hope you understand. He has called us to a certain depth. He says you shouldn't love simplicity. Refuse to be shallow. Choose to go deep. Understand me. Understand me. 
understand my ways. For it is the whole duty of man, Ecclesiastes says, to fear the Lord, to know him, to relate with him, to build a relationship with him. This is eternal life, he said, that you might know the one true God and his only son, Jesus. Let me tell you, primarily, you're on the earth to know God. To just know God. If this was an understanding that was from our minds and had gone deep into our spirits, I'll tell you, Christians would manage their time differently on the earth. If we understand what it means that our sole duty on the earth is to know God. And in knowing him then, we serve him. This is what you were created for, to know him. It's eternal life, to know the one true God and his only son, Jesus. To have a reverence, an honor, an understanding of him from the revelation that you have received of his person, to know him. One wonderful woman of God, Catherine Kuhlman, said something that, stuck with me and I believe will stick with me forever. She said that when we get to heaven, I think one of the biggest disappointments in a Christian is how much they, when we get to heaven, eventually, our biggest disappointment for many of us will be how much we were able or could have been able to do on the earth for God but we did not know the possibility of these things. In other words, one day in heaven, when our eyes are all fully open, it's like when the Bible says, the prophet says, that one day, they will, one day people will have a clear revelation of, of the devil. One day we shall all have a pure and clear revelation of the devil. Isaiah says, many will look at you at the devil, sorry. Men will look at him and say, was this the one which tormented the world? Many shall look and say, was this the one that made the earth tremble and kingdoms to shake? Why? Because of, I believe, how small really the devil is. How weak really he is. How powerless he is against the Christian. So he says, one day, men, Isaiah 14 says, will look at Satan narrowly. <laughs> you know what it means to, be, to look at Satan narrowly. 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 <laughs> narrowly. In other words, you look, when you get to that place and have the clear vision of who you really are, celestial, You look narrowly at the devil and say, was this the one that killed Jasper with cancer? You will say. So I think that's the vision that Catherine Kuhlman speaks about when she says, people will look and the disappointment and frustration that will come to us because you will come to the full understanding of what you could have done on us. How big you could have done for God. How great you could have done for the kingdom. How much we could have accomplished. Right now, they say Christians are 2.7 billion on the earth. One million is Roman Catholic. Pentecostal, they say it's between 500 and 600 million. And guess what? The recent report shows 300 million Christians are under persecution. 2023. That day, I received a report from India, north of India. 250 churches were burnt in one day. One day. 250 churches. I mean, the ones who are really living in this identity of Christianity. Almost half, close to half of the Christian, your evangelicals are under persecution. Burying their wives and husbands and children every night. You can't understand it because you're seated here 
you have no worry of anything happening any second. Because of your spiritual history. If you go back, some were killed on this land too. And persecution will continue. I believe it's even now worsened. It's worsened. Across the world. It's as though you look and think to yourself, what is happening to the world? What is happening to the world? Somebody has a, Christian, has a problem with a Christian trying to tell somebody that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But that same person is passing a legislation telling a woman, allowing a woman to kill a human being. But they have a problem with a Christian telling another man that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Think about it. 2023. They have a problem. They have a problem. That same community, that same group of people, tell a woman that you have a right to kill your child. But when they are born, you have no right to chastise them. They're not yours. Think about it. When they are born, they are not yours. You can't discipline a child in Europe. You can't tell a child in Europe that I want you to go to church. No. Child will go and report you to the government. And the government can't even take that child away. But the same government can allow you to kill that child when they're still in the womb. They can, oh, so which is easier? Are you thinking, which should be easier to legislate? Are you following what I'm saying? But so is the world. So is the world. Christianity in Europe, go to these developed nations, it's at its decline. It's at its decline more than ever before in, Christian his in human history. It's going down every day. So probably what you see in parts of Africa, some of you think that that's how the world is. No, the world is different. It's going down every day. So when we get to heaven one day and God identifies one little young man and tells him, you could have actually revived that continent. The power was available. The grace was available. The knowledge was available. The provisions were available. But you did not know. You did not know. You could have built wealth for the sake of the kingdom. To get the orphan and the widow. To feed them and bring them to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Make decisions to lend to nations. To become the voice and the answer. To establish the kingdom of God while on the earth. But you never saw that. In all your life, you are believing God to pay for your debt. You shall lend to nations. Father, pay my debt. You shall... You shall learn to nations, Father, pay my debt. So when I had that thing, I made a prayer to God and I said, Jesus, may I be the least disappointed. <laughs> you get it? Your sole purpose on the earth is to know God and know him deeply and intimately. Do you know in our generation, it's very easy to define lust than it is to define hunger. Because it's a material world. If you read church history, and I've been a student of that, modern church history, let's say. Let me just give an example of modern church history. And you see the trend of how quick the anointings, the glories are departing from our altars. Because now it's a transactional world. I'm still in the younger generation. But I can only tell you that even kids, I'm 10 
nine, ten years older than don't know how to pray. Just ten year difference. They don't know how to pray. I was raised with that man, he can tell you. It's not a hard thing for us to pray the whole night. It's, it's, not, it's not. He can tell you. It's not a hard thing to fast for nine months. Eight months. It's not a hard thing. But look, just ten years difference from us. Ten year difference only from us. And they can't pray. They can't even fast. Now, if you're 50, I'm not talking about you. Let your generation judge you. <laughs> and above. The psalmist says, I don't exercise myself in matters higher than I. Neither is my heart haughty. Touch not the Lord's anointed. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? Now, take another 10 off. Some of them don't even go to church anymore. A report was released in the United Kingdom and they say 78%, 78% of the kids under 25, they say they don't know that God exists. They don't know. They don't know that God exists. 78%. Slightly up. Plus, not minus, plus. They don't believe that God exists. They don't believe that God exists. So my God is just a phrase. So what somebody uses, because they had somebody use that in a language. Why? Because the revelation of God is something I believe that is leaving our altars. Our generation does not tarry. It doesn't wait on God. Few of them sit in the word, except if we are looking for a job, like I said, or if it's out of duty. But to just say, let me know God. Let me just know God. Let me read my word, this word, to know him, to see. Because, like I said, God responds to your degree of hunger. God will give you as hungry as you are. He can't give you beyond your hunger. Now, you read a portion of scripture like where John was. John says, this man did things. If they should be written, even the books, the world would not contain the books that should be written. So I'm thinking, John died with things in his spirit. He left us letters. Paul died with things in his spirit. He left us letters. Peter died with a lot in his spirit. He just left letters. And that's why I always tell people, a finite being, sorry, an infinite being in a finite body cannot die empty. You know, one man said, go to the grave empty. That's not possible. Okay, it's, I think he meant that spend and be spent. I think that was his point, that you spend and be spent. But let me tell you something. When the Bible says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, it has not entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him, but he has revealed these things to us who love him by the Holy Spirit. And that same spirit, the Bible says, such as the Amplified Version, the bottomless things of God. That means the Holy Spirit that you have in you, such as bottomless things. Now, as far as long as he's with you, in you, and you in intimate relationship with him, he will always go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So how can you die empty when you have an infinite source? He didn't say out of you shall flow a river. He said out of you shall flow rivers of living water. Plural. No, we just finish our mandates. But we never die empty. We can spend and be spent. Even times Paul would say, ah, I have a lot to tell you, but you're canoe. That doesn't mean that's all he knows. He just says, no, you're just canoe. You're not ready. Even till now, you're not ready. So I'll treat you as babes. Then he walks away. That doesn't mean that that's all he could give them. No, 
he was respecting the principle that God can only give you as much as you are able to take. The Bible says, let him that is able to receive, receive it. You see what I'm saying? No man will ever understand you as an individual fully. Because the God in you is infinite. For as long as I'm alive, I'll always teach something new. Always. For as long as you'll hear me. And I'm not saying this about myself only. But I'm saying this for every child of God who understands what has been given to us by Christ. Somebody say, I am an infinite being. He says the things in you are bottomless. They are bottomless. Cancer in the heart of a man is as what? Deep waters. But only the man with understanding can draw it out. So everything is actually inside you. The word is nice. It's in your mouth. in there. You just need to look into the mirror. Man told Ibaza. And then start this thing in your spirit. And eventually things start connecting out of you. They're in there. You just need to be awakened. As you read the word of God, as you look into the mirror, you are changed. You are metamorphosed. You are transformed into that very image and likeness of Christ. The end of that is, as we know him, we become more like. Now, it's a dangerous scripture to read because many people read this, but they don't really take it to their spirit. The Bible says that we might grow into him in all things, which is the... <laughs> Who has understood what I just said? The Bible says that you might grow into him in all things. That you might grow. Ephesians 4.15. He says, speaking the truth in love may grow into him in all things. He didn't say that you may grow to be like him. Which would have been enough? But he says that you might grow into him, sumorphos, predestinate to be conformed, sumorphos, into the very image, to be like or as one, or one with. Actually, sumorphos is to be one with. That means you are conformed. You are, the, God has designed predestination to make you one, to be of the same form. To be of the same form. He says he wants you to grow up into him. Hey, so that one day they don't say that's Merab. No, they say that's Christ in a man. That's Christ in a man. That's Christ. So it's possible to grow into him. Now imagine, you see, that's why we miss it. There's a person trying to understand how to stay healthy. And there's another man trying to grow up into him because if they grow up into him, cancer won't be a problem. Because Jesus can't suffer from cancer. His life cannot be taken. He says the prince of this world has nothing in me. There's a higher life. There's a higher life. Are you following what I'm saying? There is a higher life. To grow up into Jesus. So as I read the Bible, hey, as I read the Bible, now let me explain to grow up into him. Because some of you, when you think grow up into him, you only think from the perspective of signs, miracles, and wonders. It's more than that. What did Jesus know? While he was on the earth. How did he see God? When the Bible says you have the mind of Christ. <laughs> ye have the mind of Christ. Ye have the mind of Christ. He says we do hold the very feelings and thoughts. The Amplified says. We hold the very feelings and thoughts. Paul says it's in there. It's just not yet been activated. Because we are not relating as we ought to the word. 
for who has known or understood the mind of the counsels or purposes of the Lord as to guide and instruct him and give him knowledge. He says, but we have the mind of Christ the Messiah and do hold the thoughts, the feelings and purposes of his heart. Do you know what it means for somebody to tell you actually hold the thoughts of Christ? They're in there. Why? Because he's resident in you through faith. Christ is in you through faith. He's the word in you through faith. But you are not opening that world up. You're not switching that light on by being one with the word, by being intimate with the word, what could you have done if you had come to the full knowledge of the person of Christ? These are the things that when I think about, I just want to read the word. I just want to read the word. They asked uh, the Billy Graham before he passed and asked him, if you are given opportunity to go back through your life, to relieve your life, what is that one thing you would have wanted to do better? He said, I would have read more and prayed more. He said, I would have read more and prayed more. Yet that man really read. He really prayed. But he, he said, you pray more and read more. Years ago, I have this interesting vision. And the Lord, I, I, I think I should have been, I just probably graduated from university. So in this interesting vision, a wonderful figure of man appears in my vision, who I know very well. Wonderful man of God. One of those distinctive marks of anointings on the earth. On the earth. One of, I would call him a, a patriarch or a, a prophet to his generation. Not in his generation only, but to one of those greats. So, it's like in a vision, he's taking me around and he's showing me dimensions of anointings. Right? And I'm taken to the beginning of the earth. Some of you understand me. So I'm taken to the beginning of the earth and I'm shown anointings and their distinctions. So the Bible says he has the diversities of gifts by the same spirit, diversities of operations by the same spirits, diversities of administration, administration by the same spirit. So I, I was seeing those. And in that vision, they were helping. I was being helped to, to calibrate my course. You understand? Because every man is given a course. As I said later, I'm going to talk about the assignment. Every man is given an assignment, a course. So he was helping me understand my course. What I'm called to do. And why. And to help me understand the pattern in history. So I should know the line to follow, even when I'm studying concerning my ministry. Because there are people in that line that I thought by this understanding I should follow and read about and get their books and whatever they taught to understand because there was a similar pattern to those people and many things. And so after showing me these things, a few days later, months I think, this same individual comes back in a vision Again, we're in the heavenly places. An angel is present. He tells me, you're not praying as you ought. You're not praying as you ought. Your spirit is not ready as it ought to be ready. So what do you do with that kind of information? What do you do with that kind of information? That God has made available this mandate for you as a believer, but he's saying you need to prepare your spirit. And in preparing your spirit, you need to learn to wait on me. To learn to pray as you ought, because there are things I need time to give you. And I can only give those things to you if you give me time. From that day, I took on another place of prayer. I don't know whether I'm, st I'm still where I'm expected to pray. 
praying. Pray for me as I pray for myself, as, as I pray for you. How can we emphasize in this generation how important prayer is? How important prayer is. Again, I would need to speak more of hunger because without hunger, you can't pray. Last, you can, you, with last, I mean, you don't need to pray. You go to God, you get a job, then you're done. Until the next time that job is shaken, then you go to God again, then you're improved, and then you, till the next time when your husband says, I think this relationship is not working. Makadaba, rogodo, kaboze. You understand? <laughs> then he says, I think we need to rec I need to reconsider my decision. Then you put back the place of prayer. People who are living that way are not as, as alive as they ought to be. I think I learned that from a great man. They are not as alive because the sign of a man alive he said, the sign of a man alive is hunger. So when a person is born, a baby is born, they'll cry always because they are hungry. That's a sign of a person who is alive. So if you are dead or dying, you understand, you reduce food. Now, take that from the, from the spiritual perspective. That's how you know that you're dying. When the hunger for the things of God is not present. Even when everything in your life is working right. But you don't feel like praying. You don't feel like studying the word. But you can sit on an hour, two hours, three hours. Oh, these days you, you watch season. You can watch eight seasons of a certain soap. A, a Mexican soap. No, not soap, soap. <laughs> soap opera. Then you cry. Why? Because Barbarita has been taken by Alejandro. <laughs> and there's... Are you following what I'm saying? But God is raising a generation. <laughs> and they're here. Who are saying for us, we are going to seek God's best. Somebody shout hallelujah. God help us. God help us. Back to John. He says, this man did many things. This is a portion of the kind of portion of scripture that should make you hungry. I don't care how religious you are. The feeling of missing out. What did John see where I was not that was done that should have been written of this Christ I follow every day? Let me tell you, if you saturate your spirit with that kind of hunger, many of you realize, like one man sang, the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And Satan has understood the mystery. So he keeps us busy in the needs of the earth. You, you had the devotion of the day. Some people apply the word as a need, not as a treasure. So we only look to the word to fulfill our needs, not because we treasure the word. Are you following what I'm saying? What did John see? God opened my eyes to connect to what should have been written. So I can demystify this and help somebody else see it. Now I come to assignment for you to understand assignment. The Bible says many are called but few are chosen. The chosen are assigned. The called are gifted. To fulfill a call, God will have to gift you. 
with a gift you can fulfill a call. Are you following what I'm saying? But when you get into that place of election where God says, I choose you. To be assigned is another place. There are many people who are gifted, but not assigned. They are called, but they're not assigned. He says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I called you to be a what? A prophet. But before he's formed in his mother's womb and he's called, that doesn't mean he's assigned yet. When you earn a university degree, say in engineering, that's a qualification. That doesn't mean that you're assigned an office to work. Now you get assignment, commanded, to be in the Lord's vineyard. Because there are people who are called, but they're not assigned yet. They're qualified with their giftings. They have all the spiritual credentials, but they're not assigned. I'll give an example of a man like Isaiah. He says, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. This young man was in the presence of God, seeking God. I think one day I'll give a different sermon on that because there's a lot to unpack and I don't have the time to share. But touching assignment, I'll teach about it soon, I promise. But this fellow is not even trained to walk in the spirit. He doesn't even know how to relate with spiritual beings. Are you following what I'm saying? He doesn't know how. By the way, when things are happening, eh? so when people just get slain, they just carry it. Don't, don't mind, just keep here. So he has a voice. No, before that, he, he comes in contact with a heavenly being and he says, oh, I'm done. I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. He didn't even know how to respond to a vision. And then the angel says, okay. He puts life call in his hand. He tells him, now you've been what? Clean. Then, Elohim, God the Father, Son, and the Spirit, say, whom shall we send? Whom shall we send? This is a boy whose mouth has been consecrated that very hour. So much as he's been given spiritual language, he carries not the experience that comes with wisdom and the wisdom that is required for the language has been given. But he's available. He says, send me Lord. He was not God's choice. God was just talking. God the Father, Son and the Spirit, they were talking. At that particular point, they had not yet assigned who. And this young man said, you send me. You send me. He's freshly been cleansed. Cleansed, sorry. His mouth has just been cleansed that very second. He's not even understood how to use the language yet. He says, say to these people, their hearts are waxed, their ears are dull. What should I tell them? Just tell them that. But does Isaiah have the meaning? At least... He's assigned. Then in there is another lesson. <laughs> in there is another lesson. Because not all who are assigned are actually ready. But all who are assigned are available. If you study David, there were many parts of David that were not ready. He was anointed king before he was ready to sit on the throne of Israel. But he was anointed. But the office. You see? He gets into the office and you still see parts, the assignment, he, you still see parts of David that are still not ready. There are parts of him, I mean, you know, killing Uriah, taking over Bathsheba, there were parts of him that were not yet tamed. Are you following what I'm saying? But it's better if by grace I am prepared by the time I enter the assignment. However, God is so attentive 
to the available, whether they are ready or not. He said, I sought for a man who should stand in the gap. He wasn't looking for credential. He was looking for an available man. He says, I want to save these people. Who can I assign? Who is available? Are you following what I'm saying? You see the heart of God. Because he wants to save man at any cost. Better to be prepared again, I repeat. But I've seen even men which were not prepared. God say, I can still assign this one. Because I know their heart. The place of a man's heart before God is the primal preparation. In fact, more, it's more important than any other preparation. I'm not saying preparation is wrong. Every man should be prepared. But I'm saying nothing comes close to the state of a man's heart. That's why he defines David for us to understand. In fact, the, the Hebrew says David was a man with the heart of God. Not with a heart like God's. No, with the heart of God. You understand? There are things you'd see David do that were not taught in a Bible school, even though Bible school is important. This God taught him and put in his heart early. That's why he invests a lot in training Solomon. Although Solomon didn't get it fully. But at least he tried. There are things that he saved through Solomon. There are things he could not do, but he could do by Solomon. You understand what I'm saying? He set Solomon up to ask for wisdom. That's what the Bible says. Solomon himself testifies, I was my father's son, tender, only beloved inside of my mother. He told me, my father told me and said unto me, let your heart, let, let your heart retain what my, my words, keep my commandments and leave verses 5. He says, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of your mouth, my mouth. He says, whenever you're given an opportunity to get from God, get wisdom. So when this boy gets into a dream and God wants to make a, you know, a, to, to, to bless him, he asks him, what shall I give you? He remembers the instruction David planted in his spirit. Are you following? While he was still eating. That was an extension of David's heart. The wisdom in Solomon was an extension of David's heart. That is why when you study Solomon later, even with that much wisdom, there was a wisdom that was never with him. Because a man with that kind of wisdom, there was no wisdom in him testing folly. There are things Solomon, even with his wisdom, he could not know. That's why we, in the New Testament we have Messianic wisdom. He says the queen of the south will judge this generation. Because she came all afar to hear the wisdom of Solomon. But now one with greater wisdom is come. So when you say that Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. Yes. To Christ. The wisdom of the Christ is far superior. The Bible says one with greater wisdom is come. That means you are supposed to be wiser. Solomon. Because now you have the one with greater what? Wisdom. The wisdom on Solomon could not preserve a kingdom. Can you imagine? Could build wealth, but it could not preserve a kingdom. It couldn't keep a kingdom. It could, you know, get him maiden, maiden servants and, you know, he says, I built me vineyards and, 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 and I, I met the finest gardens in the world. But that wisdom wasn't enough for him to run a house. Are you following what I'm saying? How many wives and concubines? Ah, the wisest man. He's the one who divided Israel, by the way. Solomon is the beginning of the division of Israel. The wisest. God is trying to show that there's something higher than Solomon. So our generation doesn't need Solomonic wisdom. It needs Messianic wisdom. Because he is the perfect one. In him is the fullness of all wisdom. All wisdom. All wisdom. In him I hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All treasures of wisdom. All wisdom. Not just Solomonic. Every kind of wisdom. 
but you carry no language for. Now imagine that man with all kind of wisdom is doing a miracle. You think he's just doing a miracle? Every miracle came with a teaching. It came with a wisdom. Well, there is the shallow version of it. But then there's also the deeper interpretation that any man could pick from a different place according to whatever dimension they're functioning in. It's like, you remember the post, some of you probably have read the portion of scripture in, the, in, in, in Matthew. I was studying this thing and I saw something that blew me. Can I show it to you? They get into a sheep with his disciples in Matthew 8, 23. Are you tired? Okay. They get into a sheep in Matthew 28, 23. And while they're on a sheep, there arose a great tempest in the sea. And the sheep was covered with the waves. And this Jesus was what? Asleep. And these disciples came to him and woke up saying, Lord, save us or what? We perish. He, he, you know, he tells them, you guys of little faith, da, 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 da. allow me to skip because I have little time here. And he rebukes the sea and it ceases. Isn't it? And they all marvel. They say, what manner of man is this? That even the winds of the sea obey him. There's a sermon there. There's a revelation there. There's even a revelation on how he can sleep. I can teach on that alone. There's a revelation on how, what consciousness attuned to this man, attuned this man's spirit. That he had the potential to sleep, to sleep. Literally sleep. That they have to wake him up. It's a trained spirit. I could teach that also. There's something I see there. But I want to teach something here that we missed or some of us had never seen before. Men marveled saying, what man of man is this that the winds obey him? Verses 28. Now he comes to the other side into the country of Gagezanus. He enters a country called Gagezanus where he meets two men which are possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, right? So he rebukes the what? The demons out of these what? These men. The demons say, suffer us, you know, to go into the what? Are you following me? There was a herd of swine. So the herd of swine, the demons are sent into, there's even a sermon there, that Jesus had the prayer of a demon. We are still on the mir one miracle. Some of you are worried, will he hear my prayer? Listen, a demon said, a demon told Jesus, that at least you send us in the pigs. And he said, okay. I'm that merciful. I can hear even a demon pray. Go okay in the pigs. You see, you understand? And you still worry that he will hear the prayer of tuition? There's a sermon there. But listen. Now, they, the Bible says, the people which were looking after the, the sheep, or sheep, swine, sorry. Go back, verses 23, and tell everything that had befallen the possessed of the devils. The scriptures tell us they went to talk about those which were possessed and what happened to them. They're not talking about the pigs. That means, this is what the Spirit showed me. You don't need to believe me. I'm just showing you what I saw. The Lord showed me that there was a more important aspect in that country concerning the rebuke of those men, of the demons that possessed the men in the tombs than the wealth these men were expecting to receive from the pigs. These men must have been points of contacts to specific principalities and powers in that country. Of which now in that country, it seems they had an understanding that once these men are still in those storms, we are preserved by a certain spirit. The, the next verse tells you, the people of that country come to Jesus and tell him, leave us. How? Ask yourself, ask yourself the question. How can Jesus 
rebuke a devil out of two possessed men and people in that country come and tell him, leave. Except that what was in these men had something connected to who they to to what that country represented in the spirit and the principality of that land. That to touch these two men, you were touching the posterity of that country. Now you understand why the pigs say, chase us into the pig. So the, the, the demons say, chase us into the water because these pigs want to go back into the water, Mamiwara, water spirits. Are you connecting? They don't want to leave the country and they can stay by being in a water body. Marine spirits, right? Now you can understand why this spirit sense there's a man on a boat. Coming. To the gen the Genesis. And he is going to disrupt something. They don't know what. So shake this thing and sink it. Because even in the days of, jo of Jonah, if you study Jonah, when the ship, when the tides come up and the waves are hitting, they say somebody must have rebelled against a certain God. Men just don't die on sea. Let's cast the lot. Who did the lots fall onto? Jonah. Are you following the mystery here? So we see by the spirit that these waves were not just waves. They were looking for a certain individual on that boat. Marine again. You see the connection. So I go to the original language to study Gagezanes. To say what's the meaning of Gagezanes. Guess what I find? I find that Gagezanes means a stranger is drawing nearer. A stranger is coming. Who is a stranger in this instance? Yeah. He's strange to their altar. Eh? Now, maybe this was not spoken. And maybe I'm right. <laughs> are you following me, child of God? This is how I see the word. That there are things that are behind things that are behind some things which are behind certain things. That when you get behind those things, you find others which are behind the things, which are behind the things. <laughs> One story. One story. But if I was in a class, I would teach about marine spirits. Just there. And I can explain them by the way. Scripturally. You see, like the Bible says, we'd rather have you wise and true that which is good and simple concerning evil. It's not our business to know about Satan. It's our business to know about God. Are you following? I want to finish because of time. The first miracle. First miracle. Jesus turned water into wine. It was okay. If he had turned water into juice. No, no. This is deep. Let me, let me show you how deep. Because it takes 10, 15 minutes to make juice. But you can't make wine. In five minutes. Winemakers like somebody here, tell us that you need between four months to six years to make good wine. And in fact, it can stretch up to 25 years for wine to really test the way it should test. Never tested it, so I don't know. Are you following what I'm saying? Now follow me. So it's more than just turning water into wine. This son of God got something that would need age 
to test. Because remember, the chief, the chief guest says, why would you serve the best wine last? That means it shows it tested like it had aged for so long. Now, there is a mystery there by which I can demystify to show you that Jesus cannot only change the future, he cannot also change the past. Apostle. Simple thing. You can't do anything about the past, but you can, Jesus can even change the past. No, let me prove it. Your sins, which you committed in the past, didn't he carry them away? Do you know heaven does not have a record of your sins? That means Jesus can not only change your future, but he can also change your past. Some of you come from average families. But something can happen in your generation. That in a few generations to come, the past of your children, when they start talking about your family, the past of your children won't be like your past. Somebody receive it. It's possible for God to write such a story with you that they will meet your children's children and say, that family is powerful. Yet in your generation, they would say, oh, she came from a very poor, mediocre family. Not by power, not by might, but by his spirit. He can even rewrite your story. He can go back and wrap pages in history and plant others. Rahab was a prostitute in her generation. 2023, she's a matriarch. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. Jesus did many things. That if they should be written, the world itself cannot contain the books. I could go miracle upon miracle. The Samarian who came to give thanks when the nine did not return. How he beholds Melchizedek, the order, while the other ones are going to the Levitical order. I could help this. you understand the Samarian, the literal translation of the Samarian, one which beholds the spiritual thing, one which is a steward of, of that which is spiritual. In fact, that's Samaria, the word, you see? I, I could demystify that and, and show you the vision that comes to this man's eyes as he's walking and then the nine go to the Levite, he comes back to the Melchizedek order. I can define priesthood on a simple, simple miracle that many say, just learn to give thanks. You understand what I'm saying? Now, the Bible has all of those layers. The Hebrew tells you that almost every dimension of biblical thought has 800 dimensions of interpretation. At least. Least. You understand? So there's a lot for us to learn. Fall in love with the word. If, if, if it's revelation or insight you need, ask for it this evening. Somebody say, oh, I read the Bible, I don't, under, I don't understand it. Yes, let's pray for you to understand it. Because I was there, there was a time I used to read and I couldn't understand a thing. But there was a time it opened to me. You understand? So it's possible for the word to open to you. My point is, be hungry. Be hungry. God wants to raise a generation that desires the word of God more than necessary food. That they'll call you one day to eat and you tell them, wait. <laughs> because the word of God on your lips is as honey. Build that relationship. Let me take you back as I finish. Because you are assigned according to the revelation you find.
you are assigned. According to Revelation, you sign. You find, sorry. Because that's what you give to the world. You might, might be in business. It might be in your engineering. It might be on my old as a preacher. Wherever it is. But God assigns according to what is revealed. When Isaiah saw the Lord, he was assigned. Are you following what I'm saying? He gives you that revelation. It starts to work and reveal itself through your life. You start adapting, evolving, mutating through it. And as you are transformed by it, your, your assignment is defined on the earth. And you find yourself exactly where God wants you to be. If I had not found this, you'd not know me. Let's get to our feet. I'm going to give you two minutes to talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. Two minutes only. Let's talk to Jesus. Whichever way you feel.
this is my heart's prayer for you for myself Lord in the words of Paul that we may count all things a loss for the excellence of your knowledge that all things will be done that we might win you that we will know you as a man or woman on this crowd whose hunger only you are big enough to feel touch them touch them may we know you may we cease to be so you will be may we be nothing so you will be everything may we live out all the rest of our days on earth to bring glory to your name and produce fruit that will echo through eternity may we refuse the world and choose you may we die to the things that take our time for you because I feel there are men here and women who are heavily assigned for the move that's coming. And God, we can say, we are available. Help us. Amen. If you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus, and you want to have a relationship with this God I was talking about here today. I want to give you an opportunity to come right now and receive Him as your Lord and Savior. Run quickly. Run quickly. We're out of time. Come. You take me. Come. If you say, I want to be born again, I, I want to receive eternal life. Come on to pray with you. Come. Come here quickly. You say, I've had this message. I want to live for Jesus. I want to know God. Come as you are.
you, Jesus. Manifest Mbarara, we see you. The live streaming centers. Let's celebrate Manifest Mbarara. Manifest Kasese. Manifest Jen Jojo. Manifest Gayaza. I see a lady in yellow. Manifest Kulu. I see about five of them. Panyadoli. Health Center. of God is here. Repeat this as after me. Say, Father God, I thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ, whom today I choose to receive as one who died for my sins and was raised for my glory. Today, I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for this new creature. I bless you because all strongholds are broken this very hour. Witchcraft is broken this very hour. You spirit of witchcraft, lose her! Spirits of infirmity, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Spirits of struggle and strife, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Spirits of death, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Spirits of struggle and strife, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Let's give the Lord a mighty clap of praise. I'm going to ask you for only two minutes, two of your time. I have some seats there where I want a pastor to meet you, to help you understand what it means to be born again. There's only one gift you can give yourself. Keep coming in the presence of God. On Sunday, we have two services, 9 to 11 a.m. And then 11 to 1. You can come in the second one. I prefer in the second because it's longer. I have more time with you. Okay? So I'll see you on Sunday. Okay? You, you can go there. The rest of you, see you over the weekend. Creator of the universe. What can you do? What can you do? Jesus. What can't you do? What can't you take? What can't you take? What can't you take? Jesus. This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Finero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Finero, make manifest.